<clears throat> okay, so we're going to analyze the fundamental set of solutions for a linear second order homogeneous ODE. And we do it with the example x squared y double prime plus x y prime minus y equals zero. In this example, we are going to be given one of the solutions. Uh, you might be given both solutions, in which case you could st skip step three. Um, but if you only have one of the solutions, this will allow you to get a second. So let's just go through how to check a solution with one of these. It's the same thing we did in the past where you need to look at the derivatives of the supposed solution. In this case, the derivatives are pretty easy to do, right? The derivative, first derivative of x is 1, second derivative is 0. Right? Take those derivatives and substitute them into the differential equation and check that it's an identity. Second derivative 0, first derivative 1, and the function itself is x. And so you get 0 plus x minus x, which checks out, right? So this shows that y1 equal to x is a solution to the differential equation. Now, in order to do some of the other analysis, it's nice to talk about the coefficient functions in a consistent way. And so we're going to eliminate the one in front of the second derivative and then call that standard form. And we can talk about the coefficient functions p and q as being in front of the derivative and the function. So we actually have a little work to do to get it looking like that here. right? We need to divide everything by x squared, yeah. Then you'll have the second derivative, coefficient 1. And you can identify what p and q are. So p is just 1 over x. Right? And q is negative 1 over x squared. So this is a way to find the second solution where we take the first solution and think of the second solution as just multiplication by some function u. If we know what u is, we can multiply y1 by u and get this second solution. Now there is a problem in the textbook that goes through this process and it's talked a little bit about in the critical thinking questions. We're going to avoid a lot of that, but uh, just for reference, it is exercise 9 on page 205. But here's the formula and it just depends on the first solution, the function p of x, and here k is a constant we can pick for convenience. So let's give this formula a try. Uh, 
actually. So instead of p of x, I'm going to go ahead and put in the function 1 over x. And instead of y1 squared, I want x squared. So we can do that um, little integral in the exponent there, right? Integral of 1 over x is just natural log. Mm -hmm. So you just get x plus c, negative, negative x plus c. So we actually won't take any constants of integration on these. Mm -hmm. uh, because the constants will come in when we combine y1 and y2 at the end. So let's ignore that outer integral for now. And right, it would be negative natural log in the exponent, right? And the plus c would also be up there, right? No, we're we're not gonna use plus c's for either of these integrals. Um, because we just need any solution to these integrals. So I guess when we did uh, first order, u, when we did a u, we each got a c. But in these in these examples, when uh, which integral should I expect to get a c? I mean, just we don't get the c's with the integrals. We'll actually just multiply them in front at the end. In front of the function y is one yeah. plus two. So, okay, nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, e to the negative natural log is actually just 1 over x, right? Because we can bring the negative up as an exponent, and then e and natural log cancel, and x to the negative 1 is 1 over x. So this is really integral of 1 over x cubed, right? is that going to be? So the exponent's going to go up by 1 to negative 2. And then we're going to have to divide by the exponent. So negative 1 half. good because we were to take the derivative you'd have that negative 2 would come out front and cancel with the negative 1 half and then the exponent would go down to negative 3 so you can choose k at the end here to make this as clean as you want it's chosen for convenience if there's nothing to really cancel out you can just make k 1 but here it would be beneficial to make k negative 2, because then you can just write this as 1 over x squared. So this isn't the other solution. This allows us to get the other solution. Remember, the other solution was... y1 times u y1 was x, and y2 is 1 over x squared. So the other solution that we found is 1 over x. Right. Let's verify that 1 over x is actually a solution to this differential equation. So what is the derivative? Just 1 over x, is that right? Yeah, just 1 over x. So the derivative is going to be negative 1 over x squared. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 
And second derivative is what? Just positive two? Yeah. The next negative cancels out. Right. So we're gonna add, we have a negative out front, and then that negative two multiplies with the negative out front, makes it positive two over x cubed. So there's the proposed second solution in its two derivatives. I'm just going to put those in the differential equation, make sure it checks out. Yeah. So for k, we can just make whatever we need to do? As long as it's a constant, yeah. Okay. So it's good to wait till the end there and then see what you'd want to make it. I mean, if it's for some people it would bother them, they could make it 1 to start off to make it go away. Uh, but then they'd be stuck with this negative one half here, which wouldn't really be a problem. It, it, you could put a negative one half here; it's still going to work. So this is uh, because the thing about it, you know, with any of these homogeneous differential equations, you could take any solution and multiply by a constant, and it's going to work still, because that that multiplication by the constant could just be factored off, because it's going to be here, it's going to be here, it's going to be here, and so multiplication by a constant doesn't really do anything. So is this independent because it's non-zero? Uh, so we haven't gotten to the independence yet. We're just checking, making sure that it does, make, making sure it's a solution. So let's put this in here. And put this in here. Here we've got 1 over x. All right. Now, do we need to simplify this a little? Probably. Um, so it's right. Very good. 2 over x minus 1 over x minus 1 over x. A legitimate form of protest. Mm -hmm. So let's check that these two solutions are in fact linearly independent. Um, you could do this by looking at the Ronskian and making sure that it's non zero. You can also just make sure that neither one is a multiple of the other, which is as simple as just dividing them, right? If, if one's a multiple of the other, then when you divide, um, you'll have a constant. So it's possible to do step four, that is verify the solution, see that it is, in fact, you know, the solution, and it's still, it could still just, it wouldn't be valid, it could still fail that uh, linear independent test? Right, it, it might not be the other solution we're looking for. It might just be a multiple of the one we found in the first place. So if it's a multiple, what, is, what does that say about that solution? That it's not really providing us anything new, right? We know there's another... I guess it's not an interval that we're evaluating. I mean, I, I mean, if it's a solution, even though it's a multiple, I guess it, if, if it was a multiple, why would that not be a solution? It's just a more depth look at it, that's all. Yeah, so from the start, we know y1 equal to x is a solution. And you can check that multiplying that by any constant, 5x, 10x, negative 3x, those are also all going to be solutions. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't do us much good if we end up going through this process just to get something that's a multiple of this one. Um, later on, I think linearly independent can be more complicated, especially when you have more than two things that you're comparing. Triple order. Right, because then you have to make sure there's, you know, that you can't combine two to get a third, and it becomes a little less clear. 
uh, what's going on. Um, and that's why you don't have to develop this idea of using the Ronsky in here. Um, but let's quickly just show the quick way. These are linearly independent sends. Uh, oh, yeah, they're x and 1 over x. It's x, not a. So if you have multiples and you divide, you'll get a constant, right? 3x divided by x is 3. Uh, if you divide these, you will not get a constant. Now we can also set up this Ron skin, which is the determinant of that matrix. So we do a matrix where the first row is the two solutions and the second row are the two derivatives. And then do the determinant of that and it defines the Ron skin. Right. And you want to make sure that that's non-zero on whatever interval of validity you're looking at this thing on. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that up. Is it German, Rolfson? Probably. So we would have x times... Uh, x times negative 1 over x squared. Right. So there's the first solution times the derivative of the second. minus the derivative of the first times the second. And we can simplify this a little. Uh, should be negative 2 over x, yeah. Because that's negative 1 over x, and that's negative 1 over x. So, well, OK, if x equals 0, it'd be undefined. But that doesn't matter since the undefined is not 0. Right. The important thing is that this isn't zero. And this is something that you'd want to learn more about in linear algebra class, right? The determinant of matrix being zero related to the actual column vectors and how they're related. So I'm going to go into all that right now. Um, but hopefully you remember that when finding inverses and doing things with matrices, it was a big deal when the determinant was zero or non-zero. Um, this is one of those consequences. OK, so with both methods, we figure out that it is linearly independent, which is good. We want a two linearly independent solutions. We can now write a linear combination of those and call that the fundamental set of solutions. And this will actually guarantee every solution to this thing would be one of these, right? You can let C1 be 0 or C2 be 0 to get the individual solutions we found, but you can also add multiples of each other together and get something that's a solution as well. Uh, just for non-zero, it doesn't have to be a variable. Like when we are talking about earlier, like the, what you can multiply e to the x or whatever, my point is, even if it's not a variable, if you got like negative 2, that would still be nonlinear. Yeah, so constant would be good. Zero. Right. So getting 0 itself is bad. Getting some function that is 0 at certain points could also be problematic, like that example we did earlier, right? I mean, when it's, it's zero at certain points, that's, that's, a, that's an issue. So you really want it to be non-zero everywhere you're concerned with the solution being a solution. So if it's non-zero everywhere, then it's good. We can, no matter what our interval validity is, we're safe. I guess, but since you have an x in the bottom there, where? Right, then it makes it undefined, but that's not really a problem. Got it, OK. Uh, so there's, yeah, there is an issue with the Ronskian at x equal to zero. But 
think about our second solution isn't valid at x equal to 0 anyway, right? Our second solution is 1 over x, so that's obviously not defined when x is 0. Mm -hmm. So we probably wouldn't have an interval of validity that contains 0. You could go back to the original thing, because what if x is 0? If x is 0, then this just says y is 0. So then it only has the trivial solution. So kind of right from the beginning, you're ignoring x being 0. And you'd look at 0 to infinity or some subset of that. OK. So let's write out the solution, which we call the fundamental set of solutions. And if we had some initial conditions, we could use those to get a particular solution. Do we not have that? Let's just make some up. So the initial conditions for the second order ODs, you're going to have to have two initial conditions, because you have two constants. And so you can get boundary values, but usually it's still initial value. You'll have initial value for the solution and for its derivative. So here's how it might look. Uh, y of 0, well, we wouldn't want 0. y of 1 equals 1. y prime of 1 equals 0. Maybe something like that. Hopefully that doesn't backfire. Let's see if we can do something with that. So you take this and substitute in your x and y values. All right, so when x is 1, y is 1. And that tells you that c1 plus c2 add up to 1. Right? Just putting in x as 1 and y as 1. And then you'd need the derivative of this. What's the derivative of this? That would be c1 minus c2 minus 1 over x squared. So take the derivative, and let's put in the other condition on the derivative. It says when x is 1, y is 0. So add two numbers to get 1, subtract the numbers to get 0. What are the two numbers? And this could be a complicated system of equations. You can always just solve it like you would a normal linear 2 by 2 system. So you can use substitution or elimination, or you could use a matrix. You know, but we're just trying to figure that out. Here you could use addition method, right? Yeah, one half. You do addition or elimination method. You add these two together, you'll see that you get uh, 1 equals 2c1. But you can also just guess the numbers since you know they're opposites and they add to 1. For the homework, are we going to need to do subscripts on our constants when we're entering in the minus? Opposites, yeah. equal, sorry. Equal and equal, add up to 1. Uh, yeah. We're going to put subscripts on the constants and minus and that, you said? Um, not when you're typing stuff in my math. It'll probably just have you. Just put constant, just C. It might do C and D, or it might just have you put in find specific values. I think they find a way around forcing you to do subscripts. Is this like the first semester or uh, year that my math has had differential equations? Uh, no, people have been using it, but oh, really? there's not a really good canned course in there right now, which is where the course is all set up for you to just kind of copy and, and use. So things have been kind of created from scratch. There's a test. There's a there's a library of questions that are pre-made, but it's it's not as robust as some of the other topics. All right. So last step, putting all this together to get a particular solution. So we take our one halves and put them there and here. And let's just put the two down there. But up. Uh.